All right, so we will go ahead and get started. I know we, I think we have probably a few more joining us, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started today. Again, we want to welcome you uh, to uh, the webinar for electrical and computer engineering. We're going to get started with some short introductions. Um, I am Mary Brewer. I'm one of the academic and career advisors in electrical and computer engineering, and also am uh, honored to be the faculty advisor for our, our um, and EC ambassador. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and we'll start with Amir. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir. Um, I'm a senior in electrical engineering, major in um, power electronics. Um, I'm graduating this December, and I'm also part of our wonderful EC ambassador team as well. Happy to have you here. Hey everyone, um, I'm Kadisha. I'm also a senior in electrical engineering. I'm graduating in May though, um, and I don't know what else to say about myself. I'm just a general electrical engineering major, so no concentrations here. Hello, my name is Kirsten Harrell, and I'm a junior in computer engineering with a primary focus in controls robotics and autonomy. All right, so we're going to get started with just a short video, if you'll bear with me for just a moment here, and then we'll um, get ready to do some Q&A. So uh, whenever you are ready, you can actually go ahead and start putting your questions in the Q&A area, and we'll get to those right after the video. I'm here to talk to you about electrical and computer engineering. So for electrical engineering, you really learn about hardware and electronics and the design of both of those aspects. Well, for computer engineering, you learn about hardware like you would for electrical, but you also learn about software. So computer engineering is really a mix between computer science, which is purely software, and electrical, which would be purely hardware. And, you know, it's really just a blend between those two majors for computer engineering. Now, both of these majors offer many concentrations here at Virginia Tech. So you can specialize in your undergraduate while you go to school here. So some options for concentrations uh, for electrical engineering would be like power systems, communications, and radio frequencies. And there are many more outside of that, of course. And for computer engineering, they offer concentrations such as um, software systems, cybersecurity, and machine learning. And of course, there are more outside of that as well. Now, if you don't want to concentrate while you're in your undergraduate degree, you can also take the general computer engineering or general electrical engineering path in which you would just end with a computer engineering degree with no concentration or electrical engineering degree with no concentration. So these majors are very opportunistic. There are so many opportunities postgraduate for both of these majors. So in these majors, you can either go into the military if you want. You know, you could be commissioned to be an officer because our majors are very in demand for that field, um, for, in, for the military field. Or you can go into industry or work for the government. So you could do things like work on automotive cars and, you know, work on those systems that both computer and electrical engineering would both be needed for, for the hardware components of cars, but also for the software that would go with cars as they become more advanced now. You can work in defense, you can work in gaming, or you can work in the medical um, field and work on, you know, medical um, components for both majors, or you can go into manufacturing. Along with that, if you decide, you could also go into graduate school. In graduate school, you get your master's or PhD in electrical or computer engineering, or you could go into graduate school and you could get your MBA, or you can con continue on to get professional um, law or medicine degrees. So there are many opportunities outside of electrical and computer engineering postgraduate school. So thank you, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the Q&A below and we'll try to get to them. Have a great day. All right, so we'll start beginning, we'll begin to uh, answer, um, answer your questions, so. All right, so our first question uh, for our panelists is, is the cybersecurity minor available to all engineering majors? 
Do you all want to take that? You want me to take it? <laughs> I don't believe it's available to all majors. Um, I mean, just between electrical and computer, I know it's only um, available for um, computer engineering. I don't believe it's available for electrical. It, it actually is. So oh, sorry. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's available to any major, but there are uh, certain, certain uh, prerequisites that have to be met that are taken by CS and computer engineering students. So primarily it's the, those two majors that do the, do the cybersecurity minor, but others could if they wanted to. It's, it would just be a lot of, a lot of different, um, different work and additional work. Okay, so um, our next question is what pro programs are available for students if they ever find they have problems with a subject? Um, I can, I guess I can, I can answer that. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so for the, um, to answer this question, um, there are like so many resources you guys can use um, other than just your TA. Obviously, like every class has their own TA. Uh, you can go to, to their office hour, talk to the TA, even talk to the professors. But even if that don't help, uh, you can uh, you can obviously like, you know, ask other um, uh, I mean, students in your class. But also there are some um, there's some um, you know student groups for specific um, you know class or subject that they all like like kind of hold some you know group group study or um, something like that. And you guys can just get together, um, study, and um, hopefully like you can uh, do homework, do some projects. But um, um, I, I mean. Uh, yeah, I think like, these are like kind of the uh, things I can say off the top of my head, but um, anyone else want to add something? Yeah, I can add on to that. Um, there's the Student Success Center that has both uh, group and individual tutoring that's completely free uh, to students. And then there's also for the general engineering courses, so like chemistry, math courses, uh, physics, there's different review sessions that are weekly. Uh, some of them, like the more rigorous courses, like uh, multi uh, variable calculus, they have more than one per week, and that's a completely free course where you're with the TA um, and a few other students, and you work on problems together um, as needed. And then also there's a power hour specifically for ECE students, so you can get help with, I think it's up to 2,000 level courses within ECE. Yep. Yep. And also uh, that power hour, definitely take advantage of that. Um, um, I'm actually a just to promote it, I'm also a tutor there, so you guys can, you guys should definitely check it out. But um, um, uh, I mean, right now it's a lot, it's virtual, so we actually host all these um, sessions um, on Zoom. So it may be a little difficult, uh, but definitely, like when you guys come back on campus, that definitely take advantage of it. It's so helpful. So uh, thing we have is what courses and/or outside activities in high school would care someone uh, the most for a computer engineering degree? I think any, oh, go no, ahead. No, you can go, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I think any sort of like coding classes or anything like that would be extremely helpful. Um, I know a lot of schools have a robotics club, uh, which would be a super fun way to get involved with something. Um, but that's mostly it. Any sort of coding classes that could kind of get you ahead of the game and get you comfortable with coding languages, even if it's just in your own free time, would be really helpful. I was also just going to add to that. Just for um, engineering in general, you still have to take your physics courses. And for computer, I think you still have to take physics one and two. So if you had the opportunities to take those in high school, I would definitely jump on that and see if you want to get the credit for that, and if not, just kind of have your basis for that for when you take it again in college. Okay, so the next is how difficult is the electrical engineering discipline? Um, that's a great question. Um, so, um, I mean, our major is, I mean, so speaking of like, I mean, if you want to talk about the general terms, um, electrical engineering is not the easiest for sure. Uh, but it's definitely the um, the kind of a major that you you must like uh, to just stay in it. You know, if you don't if you don't really enjoy working with circuits, working with electronic theories and things like that, this is probably not the best choice. But if you really enjoy, you know, dealing with uh, uh, with math, obviously, if you like math, um, that is something that you cannot get away with. So um, math is something that you should definitely have um, strong interest to if you want to get into electrical engineering. But um, I mean, I personally love circuits. Um, 
designing circuits, working with, you know, circuit boards. So this, this just been my dream major and that's why I'm here. Uh, but you guys definitely, you gotta, you gotta give it some thought and, um, don't be afraid. So obviously you have, you have at least two years to decide. So even if you want to go to electrical engineering, you can still start off as a general engineering, take some general courses. It kind of prepares you, um, mentally really to, um, to kind of weigh your options. So once you get into your sophomore year and the sophomore year, junior year, that's when you can actually um you know choose between electrical engineering or any other degrees so um yeah you still have time but give it some thought okay next question can you talk about your workload and time available for other activities and then i'm gonna pair that with the next question is uh, which is what extracurricular activities are there surrounding the engineering field so we'll take both of those together so workload is obviously very vigorous because it just is for any engineering degree. But um, for electrical and computer, it just very much so is. But if you manage your time right, which you, you really just have to learn how to do and what works for you, um, you can really learn how to fit in um, outside activities with your workload, even though it's um, very intensive as is. And I'm sorry, I completely forgot what the second part. Oh, outside activities. So um, we have IEEE, which is um, a nice club just to kind of socialize and learn about other opportunities within um, electrical and computer engineering. There are also design teams that you can join and people really learn a lot from design teams on campus. And we have an amazing wear lab that um, you can really just go in and see what design teams are for you and which ones you would like to join and really just try to join them. And I can't really think of any others, but if anyone else has any others. Um, I mean, just one thing to, uh, to add to those uh, activities. Um, I always, I always mention in our um, like EC ambassador type of uh, info sessions. Try to uh, try to um, try to take advantage as much as possible with um, um, like undergraduate research and some design teams. So if you actually get into those kind of work, um, they not only help you have a subject to talk about when you go to a you know to a job to a job fair to an expo or anything. Uh, they also give you a better exposure to this, you know, the subject that you really interested in. So I mean, that kind of helps you uh, again to answer the first or the other question. That helps you really understand how difficult E is or how easy it may be for you, right? So uh, that you just gotta first um, expose yourself to those kind of topics, and then it it becomes so much easier for you to decide. What were some things that you did to incorporate autonomy into your degree? What kind of projects did you do along the way? I guess things that maybe you've done outside of um, classes and things like that. I'm not um, sure. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've done any projects specifically having to do with autonomy, but that just made me think of again the wear lab team that we have, and I believe there's like an autonomous vehicle that's being worked on in that team. So I feel like if autonomy is really your um, subject that you want to go for, definitely join that wear lab team and, you know, see what you can learn there. And I know there's also concentration for both electrical and computer um, for controls and autonomy. And I would say look into that. But I'm not sure if any projects I've done specifically within my course load have been uh, specific to autonomy. How do you compare engineering and computer science? What are the differences between those two? Uh, I wouldn't say that computer engineering or computer science is you kind of study, although they're very similar, uh, you kind of study two different kinds of languages. So like uh, computer science focus heavily on the high level languages, such as like Java and Python, while computer engineering looks at both the circuitry and the hardware and the software. So like the low level coding uh, with like C and C++. Um, so like, for example, for a computer, like a computer engineer would work on, you know, the inner workings of like making a computer work and like writing code to turn on a, a light bulb while the uh, computer science person would more so like write a website or a program for a website. Yeah, I think the short answer to that is that computer scientists majors, they really want to be engineers, but they can't. So that's why. That's <laughs> okay, so um, trying to think. Okay, here, is there anywhere that we can see programs and research opportunities for computer engineering majors? And just before you answer that one, uh, I'm just going to let everybody know, I'm going to put uh, our email address into the chat 
uh, window. So we did not get to all the questions and we're not going to be able to, unfortunately. So if you have questions remaining, uh, please feel free to email us and we'll get back to you. So uh, the question is, is there anywhere that we can see programs and research opportunities for computer engineering majors? I mean, I would just recommend checking out the EC uh, website, ec.vt.edu. That has all sorts of different professors' research opportunities on there. There's a research tab that you can go and check out. Um, and then they, it also shows some of the different design teams and stuff that you can join that are related uh, to electrical and computer engineering. This one is, can a student have multiple concentrations? Do you want me to take it? Yeah, please do. Okay, so, so within the department we have, as uh, Kadisha pointed out, many different uh, concentrations or majors. And uh, students can double major in um, an EE and a CPE major, but they could not double major in like two CPE majors or two EE majors. So a student could do say uh, energy and power electronic systems on the EE side and then do um, say controls robotics and autonomy on the CPE side. So you can combine them in that way. Do we have a separate application for the School of Engineering? and? I can take this one if you want me to. Um, through admissions, I don't believe that there is a separate one, but you would apply to the College of Engineering. Uh, if you were interested in any engineering major, you would apply to the college, and all students are admitted to general engineering uh, at the beginning. They, and then after the first year, you can choose to go into one of the different uh, departments within engineering. Um, what percentage stay in the engineering program after the first year? Um, do you all know? I, um, I, I don't know the, the exact answer to that. Probably the engineering education um, session, they may be able to give you information about um, the percentage of people who stay. So, is the department in high demand? So, I mean, we, we are, um, I think a lot of, we do get a lot of students every year. Um, the engineering has a uh, enrollment management program, and it's based on the number of faculty that you have. We have over 90 faculty in our department, so we have a lot of space for a lot of students, but we do have um, quite a few students coming to our department uh, every semester. So, um, we are, we are, I would say, in fairly high demand, so. Um, Okay, so in regards to the software aspect of computer engineering, what exactly will the focus, will be the focus of the curriculum? Um, I think that the computer engineering program, it kind of looks at a lot of different areas and you can specialize in a certain focus area if you're interested in one topic. So you go over some sort, like you go over a little bit of machine learning, you go over some high level coding, data structures, all different aspects of it. And then from there, you can kind of choose what you like and you can take more classes that are specialized in a specific area as you wish. Could classes with computer engineering be mixed with classes from computer science and electrical engineering? Yeah, so uh, the classes, well, the way that the EC curriculum is set up is so that you can take classes across uh, electrical and computer engineering uh, freely because you can have a secondary focus within the other major. So if you're in computer engineering, you could have a secondary focus in electrical engineering and take a few uh, electrical engineering courses. So you can really spread out your curriculum between uh, computer and electrical engineering. Also, something to keep in mind is that the first two years, uh, electrical and computer engineers take the same curriculum. Um, and then in terms of computer science, you can always take a computer science ma uh, minor. Uh, so you can take some courses in that area. There's also a few uh, higher level courses that are within CS. Okay, so what if I am solely interested in electrical engineering? Um, so you can go, you can just take, uh, I mean, electrical engineering as your main major. Um, I mean, general general EE, um, but um, the odds are, are really high that you're probably gonna take a um, focus, but, um, I mean, for, for our year, it's just been introduced. Um, so we, I mean, like a lot of a lot of people in our in our department didn't really know about these focuses. So that's why it's not like um, not not a lot of people are doing um, like a concentration right now. But I mean, I think like if you guys come in uh, for your year, like 2024, 2025, I think it's going to be uh, a lot more in demand. So it's going to be more um, in concentration. But if you really want to do electrical, you can, you can take general EE. 
Uh, I can also add to that. I am a general EE. Um, so I have no concentration and you just kind of take a little bit of everything. So you kind of take up the same courses that you would until your junior year. And then it's more second semester junior year. People kind of break out into their concentrations. And from there, you're still just taking a little bit from every concentration. So you'll still see, you know, everyone from your major, um, regardless of the concentration, because you just, you do a little bit of power, you still do a little bit of communications and you just learn everything. So yeah, that's definitely still an option that you could take. Okay, so next question that we get quite frequently. How does computer engineering compare with computer science in the development of gaming software and computer design? So uh, computer engineering is going to focus more on the hardware. So it's going to focus on creating uh, or coding stuff that works with the hardware. So that works with the actual gaming system. While computer science is going to more so work on the development of the games. So stuff like uh, making the characters move and stuff like that. All right. So what kind of specific jobs can you get with an electrical engineering degree? Um. Yeah, we can hear both answer. Um, I think like as, as, a, as an EE, you can um, you have like so many options. Um, I'm sure it's the same with the CPE as well. But uh, with EE, you can you can like I said, you can take on so many pads. You can you can put on like so many hats basically. Um, you can go you can go and do uh, I don't know signal processing. You can do power electronics, which which uh, which you feel I'm um, I'm in right now. But um, if you're asking about the industry, obviously you can go to aerospace. You can go you can do defense. You can do um, um, a lot. I mean, really a lot of things. Um, it just depends on really your interest. So uh, the kind of job I would say, um, it really depends on um, what you are interested in. Uh, but I would say with an EE um, degree from Virginia Tech, everyone loves to take you in, so. So can you all talk just quickly, maybe about an internship that you've done that might help them to understand what you've done in internships, maybe? Um, I can also add that too. Um, so, I mean, I did. So, I mean, I did intern for SpaceX last summer, and uh, I was I was doing uh, you know hardware like circuit design and hardware hardware development um, type of um, work. And you basically you basically do a lot of I mean circuit design for I mean, for example like we did um, a lot of um, I mean I designed these test boards to test the batteries that goes on Falcon Nine, right? So these are like really really cool stuff that you do, but obviously like this is a, this is a small part of what you can do. Um, so yeah, this was like part of my experience, but yeah, could that you can add if you want. Um, I've interned at Northrop Grumman for two summers now. Um, and my first summer there, I more kind of worked with a computer engineer or a software engineer. And I looked at the math behind a software and kind of relayed that information to her so that then she could actually do the coding because I'm not that great at coding and it's not like a specialty within electrical engineering. Um, but that was my first summer. And then this past summer, it was more of working on a specific test bench and then kind of seeing how that bench um, is made up and really just testing the test bench um, and really working in the labs and doing that kind of work. So that's just my experience as well. And of course, there are a bunch of different opportunities within electrical engineering that you can go for. Okay, so uh, what languages are taught in the computer engineering courses? So in general, both uh, electrical and computer engineers, we mostly code in C and C++. Um, we do some low-level uh, stuff as well, but that's the core curriculum. Are classes taught by faculty or teacher assistants? I'd say most classes are taught by faculty. I think the only place that... Um, you might see maybe a teacher's assistant is in general engineering, maybe in like um, calculus or kind of courses. But I would say for the most part, um, once you, especially once you get into electrical or computer engineering, it's taught by faculty. And then with that, you have like a teacher's assistant, but they just kind of, you know, are there to facilitate um, questions that you have about homeworks or just any help that they can do. If you want to enter the electric car field, is electrical engineering a good major? I mean, I think that's that's uh, one of the very, um, very high demand uh, fields right now. I mean, like a lot of a lot. I mean, like for example, like Tesla. I know. I mean, if you go to their website, nine out of ten of their like open positions, they're all like uh, looking for electrical engineers. Um, yeah, I think like obviously like for any any sort of electric field. I mean, electric field, electric car uh, development uh, roles, you definitely need to have some electrical engineering background. So. 
Yeah, I can add on to that. Uh, I interned at Honda R&D this past summer, and most of the people around me were electrical engineers. Um, so I worked heavily on the electrical side of things, and I would say it was very applicable to have that as a major. This question, how does electrical and computer engineering at VT compare to other schools? So, I mean, I think um, that we're very comparable with many of the schools we are. You know, we're in the top, I think we're in the top 15 in the nation, uh, putting us in a high percentage. I think the main thing as you're looking at different schools um, is to find the place where you fit. Um, so many, there are many really uh, stellar uh, engineering colleges out there. There are many stellar ECE programs out there. But I think, and I, I think the ambassadors would agree, you have to find the place where uh, it's not just all about the program, but it's about where you fit and where you feel comfortable uh, being uh, at for an institution. So. Uh, does computer engineering deal with development and hardware of virtual reality systems? Yeah, I would say that computer engineering really does feed into that, specifically the hardware of it. Um, yeah. Twelve credits is for full-time students. Are these yearly, semester, or quarterly, and are the 12 credits necessarily classes, or what else counts for credits? So 12 credits are per semester that you have to be a student. Um, if I... I'm answering this correctly. Um, and then there are um, classes. And then I think um, sometimes you can um, maybe like for research and for design teams when you get older for um, um, for like senior design and things like that, I think they can count for like um, those kind of courses. But that's something to talk with your advisor about for sure. Yeah, so in, in while 12, 12 credits is full time, most engineering students do take um, probably 15 to 18 credits a semester uh, in order to finish the degree in four years because there are um, the, the, um, the average for the entire university would be probably 15 credits each semester. And, and engineering is typically a little bit higher because typically they have a little bit higher uh, total number of credits required. So we really appreciate everyone being here. If you have questions, please do email us in our ecadvise at vt.edu uh, email, and we will get back to you. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you.